بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا رحم الله الحمد لله بيف توفيق تو كونتينيو ستادي اوف شرح المنظومه باي ليت ايت الله متحري وي ار توداي ستادينج ذا 16th بوينت اباوت بينج از اي سيد ان ذا لاست سيشن ذيس توبيك is related to being it's also related to the issue of knowledge and to the issue of theory of knowledge or epistemology it's very fundamental issue and that is about truth truth in the sense of صدق You know, in logic, we say قول مركب تام is either اخباري or انشائي قول means something which has meaning a word which has meaning like you know ضرب زيد امر back not like days for example which is مقلوب of زيد which has no meaning قول can be مفرد or مركب مركب means a combination مركب is تام or ناقص what is تام تام is يسح السكوت عليه قول مركب تام a word or a set of words a group of words which are complete means that when the speaker says this he can then stop be silent and the listener also don't need to ask okay then what what happened you know no it gives some information So we said قول مركب تام which they can call it also جملة is either اخباري or انشائي اخبار means like a statement gives a piece of news انشاء initiates like امر نهي تعجب this is انشاء When you say "idrib," "idhab," "ilam," "taal," it's amr, pro, amr or prohibition like "la tadrib," "la tadhab." Here you are initiating the meaning. You are initiating talab of amr or talab of tark. But "ekhbar," you are informing. If you remember, we. used to say we kept you know telling at that time that اخبار يحتمل الصدق والكذب do you remember we used to say always اخبار يحتمل الصدق والكذب a statement can be true or false but in short لا يحتمل الصدق والكذب ان شاء you cannot say it's true or false someone said you know اذهب okay what does it mean to say it's true or false yes you can say it is proper or improper it is useful or not useful but you cannot say true or false because this person is not indicating Uh, what is the reality so that we can check this against the reality and say whether you know it matches or not he says I ask you to go okay yes he asked him to go <laughs> so 
that Sidq and Kism that we explained over there, you know, one of the things that I hope, inshallah, you can do is when you study something, remember these things. When you study something in logic, in nahv, in balagha, in usul, in philosophy, in kalam, there are lots of cross-references and you should at least remember the major concepts and frameworks and reasoning. You can always refresh yourself with the details, but you have to remember all these things. And this is why I try to connect things with each other. So, we said, a statement, Akhbari, is something that admits truth or falsehood. So what is then truth? It looked at that time very simple because we have some idea, but then when we study philosophy, theology, we are faced with different opinions, then things which used to be very clear, for some time maybe they become clouded, but again, inshallah, they become clear. But this clarity is much more profound than the first clarity, which was before being challenged. What is Sidq? A very dominant view in the past and even today is that Sidq for a statement is a matter of that statement or more precisely an nisbatul hukmiya in that statement that that relation which you say it's there or it's not there because every tasdiq has mozu mahmul nisbat and hook that relation that between mozu and mahmul that you say it's there or it's not there it should correspond to outside world to the real world external world for example I say today it's cold. I am talking about coldness of today. If in the real world, external world, in Alam al Kharaji, it is cold, then my sentence my proposition corresponds to that and therefore this is true but if i say it's cold and outside it's warm then it is false so one of the most established and dominant theories is what they call correspondence theory and they mean by correspondence theory that truth is a matter of matching the reality. Some people have other ideas. For example, some people say truth is a matter of being consistent. Means not to have self-contradiction, not to be self-contradicting. As long as you are consistent, it's true. Of course, maybe more than one thing can be consistent. According to the one, first one, only one thing can be true. Some people say, let's have a pragmatistic view about truth. Whatever works, whatever has benefits, it is true. Whatever is false, whatever doesn't work, uh, sorry, whatever is harmful, whatever doesn't work is false. These are other theories, but the main theory is correspondence theory. Now, the question is, what about those propositions that don't refer to something concrete, something, you know, independent, something visible outside? For example, if I say it's cold today, okay, you check it against uh, external world. 
if I say this thing is white, you can check it. For example, if I say my chair is white, you can check it. If, if the real chair, the external world is white, yes, this is true, otherwise false. But if I say al insanu no on, al insanu no on, no, as, as you remember, is ma'gul thaniya mantaqi, is logical, secondary, intelligible. And we said that this type of concepts don't exist outside, nor doesn't exist outside. Nor is kulli, and anything outside is juz'i. Nor is general, universal. Outside is particular. So, al insano kulliyun, or al insano no'un, is true. But the thing is that we cannot go outside and say in the same way that either whether it's cold or hot or either this is white or not the same way this is no and or it is not no no doesn't exist outside this is yeah it's a mental proposition or in qadaya haqiqiya if we say كل مثلس زواياه تساوي قائمتين. If we say every triangle, its angles amount to 180 degree. It's equal to 180 degree. I'm not talking about this triangle which is outside that I have, for example, painted or drawn. On this paper, I'm not talking about that particular. I'm talking general. Many things in sciences are qadaya haqiqiya. They talk in a general way. They, if they say, for example, oxygen and hydrogen, they become water. It's not about particular oxygen or hydrogen or particular water. It's general. Or sometimes we have about mahiyat. For example, we say al insanu haywanun natiq or al insanu mumkinun. Maybe we don't have any insan outside. Still, this is true. If we say dinosaur is mumkin, okay, it's true even if we don't have any dinosaur. So, what should then we say about definition of truth? So that can include all these cases. So according to correspondence theory, what should match the reality? Ayatollah Mutahari says some philosophers in the West, they have dealt with this issue and uh, sometimes uh, they have not been able to answer and solve the problem. So they have, for example, said this is only about, for example, certain types of propositions. Even, for example, with respect to qadayai kharijiye, those things that the subject is something external. They said, for example, it would not apply in the same sense to historical propositions. Anyway, they have come up with different theories, different understandings. <coughs> You know that in Western modern world there is a diversity. Almost every philosopher, you know, may have his own ideas. In the traditional Islamic philosophy or Christian philosophy or Jewish philosophy, philosophers may have their own ideas, but there is a general framework and there are many things that they share. There are some levels of, you know, commitment to the same level of truth. Although in details, you know, they may vary. But in the Western philosophy, sometimes people totally disagree. People come up with their own philosophy. 
they may not belong to any current etc and sometimes they make new currents so it's a big you know diversity but he says Muslim philosophers believe that correspondence theory is correct is true and they have tried then to explain that how the proposition corresponds to the reality they don't correspond in the same way al insanu naw'un but al insanu haywanun but they don't masalan qa'imun they don't have the same uh, approach to the truth or the same relation with the truth therefore they have come up with this important terminology nafsul amr nafsul amr very important topic and we had this in bidaya and briefly nafsul amr is a way to refer to reality but without being limited to one type of reality when i say al insanu naw'un there is a reality and therefore this can match this but if i say al insanu laysa bi naw'in this is false it's not that because there is nothing in the real world or external world that i can refer to as no then whatever i say is correct or whatever i say is false i have to find out what this proposition is telling or about what this information is given and i check it with that thing if it is talking about something mental then i have to check this in mind if it's talking about something outside then if it is upside there about one thing about many things is it about past in history for example it's about future is it about qadiyya haqiqiyya etc so i have to find out what exactly this proposition is telling and then check it with the source with the reality for this they have coined this term nafsul amr in order to just have one you know expression and not say there are different types of things that we have to check every proposition refers to something they said we can say okay they all correspond to nafsul amr if in nafsul amr this is the case and your proposition is supporting that is referring to that okay this is correct this is true but what is nafsul amr some people have said fi had dhati means in itself and by itself what is the case al insanu naw'un fi nafsul amr fi had dhati means if you take insan by itself it is no some people have said nafsul amr is a aql mujarrad a kind of aql mujarrad a kind of abstract intellect that has all the facts and all the facts whether it be philosophical things about logic etc are there it should match that then it is true but this would not solve the problem because how that aql mujarrad has got these things maybe in aql mujarrad there is an image is a report of all these facts but the facts are not there if i say 2 plus 2 is 4 it's not because there is something in aql mujarrad about it so we have to investigate different types of propositions and show where their you know backup is or where they are referring to against what we have to check but we don't uh, 
give up about correspondence theory. So point 16 is this. Hakim Sabzawari says, Al hukmu in fi kharijiyatin sadaq mithlu la haqiqiyyat lil ayn tabaq. If hook, if the judgment that we make in the sentence, in tasdiq, is true in al qadiyatul kharijiyya or al qadaya al kharijiyya. Al qadiyatul kharijiyya is when you report about an external being and reality. For example, say rain has come and you know this you're talking about this rain or Zaid is like this for example they say hawk in al qadiyatul kharijiya is true if like al qadiyatul haqiqiya corresponds to the objective world qadiyatul haqiqiya mislu mother like what like we say, water is made of you know, oxygen and hydrogen, or every triangle is, you know, 180 degrees in its triangles. It's something about outside, but it's general. We are not talking about limited cases. So they say qadaya kharijiya the same as qadaya al-haqiqiya they should correspond to the truth wa haqquhu min nisbatin hukmiya tabqun lin-nafs al-amr fi dhihniya in qadaya dhihniya in mental propositions they say if hok if the verdict, if the judgment corresponds to nafsul amr, they say this qaziya is sadiq. So here then they had to bring nafsul amr. Because this is mental, qaziyatun dhihniya, like al insan on own. Here they cannot say mutabiqatul ayn. They had to mention another concept, nafsul amr. Although then they can use nafsul amr for all. For Kharaj and Zahni, etc. Ayatollah Mutahari, after making these points that I mentioned, he says the summary of what earlier philosophers say is this. صدق قضیه عبارت است از مطابقت آن با واقع Truth of any proposition is a matter of its correspondence to the reality, to the external world ولی واقع و نفس الامر محدود نیست به وجود اینی و خارجی که بالفعل وجود داشته باشه but the reality or nafsul am is not limited to things which are outside. Nafsul am is not just these objects or individuals that I see around. Nafsul am is there for mathematics, for physics, for chemistry, for philosophy, for everything. Everything which is talking about something and wants to be true should correspond to nafsul am. So, nafsul amr mahdud nist be wujud aini wa kharaji ke belfil wujud dashta bashad about something which is outside and right now is there. When I say every triangle is 180 degree, I'm not talking about one triangle or some triangles that are there now only. Any triangle in future is like this, any triangle in the past was like this. قضیه باید با آنچه خود از آن حکایت می کند مطابقت داشته باشد. This is the core of point of Allah, Ayatollah Mutahari. 
The mirror reflects. What do you put in front of the mirror? It reflects it. You put a human being, you put an animal, with a flower, whatever you put. One thing, two things. So our proposition is reflecting, but depending on what reflects, it reflects, you can find out what it should correspond. So, we have to see what type of information this proposition is giving and then match it against its own reality. There are different types of reality. Is it talking about a person? Is it qaziyyeh shakhsiyyeh? For example, we say zaydun faqihun. This is qaziyyeh shakhsiyyeh. We're talking about one particular person. Is it Ghadiyeh Kharajiyeh, something about the things that are outside? Is it Ghadiyeh Haqiqiyeh, about general, you know, rulings of Mahiyat? Is it Ghadiyeh Zehniyeh? So depending on what this wants to say, we can find out where to check. So he says, قضیه باید با آنچه خود از آن حکایت می کند مطابقت داشته باشد The proposition must correspond to what it is indicating Like mirror should you know, reflect what is in front of it Then he gives some examples And he says it should not be thought that when we say truth is a matter of correspondence to reality, we are talking about a particular being that right now exists outside and say, okay, if it corresponds to that, then it is true, otherwise false. Yes, it has to correspond to reality, but what type of reality? Reality now, reality past, future. Reality as a particular of a particular thing of, or of a general thing, reality of a conditional truth or reality of something which is decisive is not conditional, reality of mahiyat or reality of beings. So we have to see what exactly this proposition wants to say, and then we can define where to ma you know match, where to check. He says all these problems have started when uh, philosophers have not fully understood the way human mind works. And they thought that mind just is you know, active in what? In creating images. They didn't appreciate great work that mind does and he says this is another case that uh, we can emphasize that without mastering how mind works we cannot have philosophy so they mention qadaya kharijiyya haqiqiyya dhihniyya and of course it can be more there is no reason to say it's only this. Kharajiyya is about something that exists outside. Haqiqiyya is general, like every water is like this. Zehniyya is about something which is in the mind, like mafahim saniye mantaqi. And sometimes it's not only these three which is about external being or mental being, wujud kharaji or wujud zehni. Sometimes we have nothing to do with wujud. For example, when we have definitions, when we say al insanu haywanun natiq or al insanu mumkinun, when it's about lawazim mahiyat. Here, we are not talking about insan al mawjud. So, insan is haywan al natiq. If this insan exists, haywan al natiq exists. If the insan doesn't exist, haywan al natiq doesn't exist. But insan is haywan al natiq. 
whether it exists or not exist. He says, listen to these few sentences and the differences that they have with each other. Sometimes I say, Tamame Hazerin in Kelas Danishju Hastand. All the participants of this class are students. I am talking about particular individuals, Ashkhas Mu'ayyan, because I'm talking about the participants in this class. Sometimes I say 5 in 5 is equal to 25 or I say in definition of triangle that it's a figure that has three angles or I say it's possible to have a human being with two heads these are different again if I say all the students, all, all the participants of this class are students. We are, I'm talking about things which are outside. If I say five in two is, in five is 25, then I am talking about nature, about Mahi of five and five and the relation that they have with 25. If I say every triangle is this, I am talking about uh, I'm talking that the nature of Musallas is like this. I have nothing to do with its existence. If I say a human being with two heads is possible, it means that I want to say there is no contradiction there is no problem in imagining this or in having this it's possible whether we have it or not that's another issue so in all types of qadiyya we should find what is nafsul amr and check this against nafsul amr haji rahmatullah alayh says that the criterion for truth in qadayay kharijiyya and haqiqiyya is correspondence to external reality and in mental propositions like al insan al nu'un is correspondence to nafsul amr although we can use nafsul amr for all of them but when we have no other term to say then only nafsul amr remains and it can help us. Then it says, Nafsul Amr is this. Nafsul Amr. Yuhaddu means to be defined. Had, remember we had had and tom. Had, one meaning of had is limit, but another meaning of had is definition. So, Nafsul Amr is defined as Had Zat Shay. Means what is something in its own essence. This is one meaning of Nafsul Amr. Fi Had Zat. Wa Alamul Amr Wa Za Aqlin Yuat. He says, another thing is that Nafsul Amr is Alamul Amr, the world of Amr. Nafsul Amr is the world of Amr. Another thing is that Nafsul Amr, the Aqlin. You add is counted as something which has aql, one of the uqul, one of the uqul mujarrade. Alam amr is you know what you are familiar with, you know, we had before. We have alam khalq, we have alam amr. 
Mulla Sadra, based on this ayah, he says that there are two parts of the world. Alam al is in need of preparation, you know, conditions should be there, obstacles should be absent, so that something happens. Therefore, it needs time, it needs preparation, it needs proper conditions. Like human being, a child is not born eternally. A child is born at a particular time and space because the conditions have to be together. But in Alamul Amr, just Allah says, be and there it is. It's about Mujarradat. Mujarradat, they don't need to wait for their existence because they have no timing and they don't have any conditions to prepare. They are eternal. So some people have tried to say we have some such a world of Alam Amr that we can check against it. Ayatollah Mutahari says we can summarize what we have discussed so far in this way and he mentions 13 points. Number one, earlier philosophers have defined the Sidq or truth as a matter of correspondence to reality. And as I said, this is very established, and still many people accept this, and we accept this. Number two, this definition then receives some questions or you know comments or objections because this definition has to explain what is the reality to which they correspond. For philosoph Muslim philosophers, one issue that they had to explain is al qadaya al mantaqiyya logical propositions and another was al qadaya al haqiqiyya al qadaya al mantaqiyya like al insanu nu'un because it's in mind qadaya al haqiqiyya because we are talking about every muthallas every muthallas is not outside so every muthallas is 180 degree so we need something to say this is the reality Modern philosophers in the West, they had issues with math, mathematics, natural sciences, even history. And sometimes they have tried to solve these problems. Sometimes they have tried to come up with their own understanding of correspondence, etc., to what they correspond. But earlier philosophers, and like you know, Muslim philosophers also, they have tried to answer to the questions and objections without compromising about the correspondence theory. So they have said propositions can be khariji, can be zehni, can be haqiqi, etc. And for each of them, they try to explain how they correspond to the reality. The spirit of the answer of earlier philosophers in the Muslim world is that reality of everything is suitable and it's according to itself. What is this thing that you are talking about? Is it wujud? Is it mahiyat? Is it ahkam wujud? Is it ma'qul sani, falsafi, mantaqi, mafahim, mahawi? What is this? Number nine. Hakim Sabzawari here in the section on hikmah has something which is different a little bit uh, or somehow from what he says in the section on logic. And Ayatollah Mutahari says what he has said in the section on logic is better, is more accurate. Haji Sabzawari says that Khariji of everything is according to itself. And he says 
even mind is haraji in what sense in you know some sense even potentiality has a kind of haraji yeah, externality which is okay but uh, Ayatollah Mutahari says uh, it can be also problematic so I think personally it's basically more uh, a matter of how you define and how you mean kharajiya and you know uh, reality one problem is about alhamlul awwali when we say al insanu haywanun natiq or al insanu haywanun or about lawazim al mahiya we say al insanu mumkinun ayatullah mutahari says this kind of propositions would not fall under haqiqiyya or kharijiyya or zehniyya that we had before In order to have a comprehensive answer, we need to really try to know mind and how it works. M human mind is like a mirror. And this mir mirror is truthful. <laughs> we can say this mirror is truthful if what it shows correspond to what they have put in front of him mirror is not responsible for what is put in front of it you understand they can put different things but whatever they put mirror reflects so you can have different propositions and mind checks but they are not the same and therefore mind does not check it against the same thing He says these objections originate from the fact that no enough attention has been given to activities, different types of activities of mind. Mind is like a mirror. Truthfulness of the mirror is in showing what is put in front of it, should correspond to what is put in front of it. But if something is not put in front of it, then mirror doesn't need to show anything. So when we say we have come on Friday, that rules a jum a amadim. So what is the truth of this? Suppose on Saturday, someone says, "When did you arrive?" You say, "I have arrived on Friday." So it's Saturday. Juma has gone. What is the truth of this? The truth is not to check it, you know, today or tomorrow. We are talking about yesterday. But if in the same time framework that this sentence is talking about, which is yesterday, I had arrived, this is true. But if I had not arrived then and I arrived later, this is not true. So, for every type of proposition, there is a reality that we can call nafsul amr. This nafsul amr sometimes is just something outside. I talk about Zayd. I say Zayd is a standing. You look outside, Zayd is not a standing. You say this is false. This is easy. To find nafsul amr for such sentence is easy. I say whether it's cold or hot, it's easy to find. If I say Zaid was a standing and now time has passed, you understand, but it's still it's a little bit complicated because where is that fact? That finished or that fact is never finishing. The fact that Zaid yesterday at certain time was a standing, that fact as a fact remains forever, although the reality has changed. For example, 40 years ago, I was, for example, a teenager. 
Now I'm not a teenager. And now I cannot show you outside or in here, you know, in me that 40 years ago I was a teenager. Everything has passed. But this is true that 40 years ago I was a teenager. There is no simple, direct, immediate, you know, thing that I point at and said this is where my sentence is corresponding to. I cannot, you know, take it to any place or, you know, show myself and say that sentence, you know, uh, corresponds to my condition now, to who am I now. But it is true. So one simple way is, okay, all these facts are stored in an immaterial aql or in a, in a special realm. They are stored like you know records in archive and we can check and things in the future we can check but then those records with what <laughs> they match with what they correspond the answer is that nafsul amr is different from any records of nafsul amr from any archive of nafsul amr Haqiqa in this world is a network. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the absolute truth. And then anything which has a reality and truth has to have some relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those relations may be in time, may be in space, may be general, may be universal, may be eternal, may be material, may be immaterial. But he holds all these relations. And any time in the history, you can reflect and try to find out. You don't, you know, feel that you cannot go to the past or future or you cannot talk about things which are universal or things which are in mind. Why? Because there is a network of all these truths. Part of it are independent, you know, beings, concrete beings outside. Part, lots of it is relations between the concepts, between the notions. For example, math. Even if you have no human being, math is correct. Propositions of math or philosophy, they are correct. And this is the amazing power that Allah has given to human mind that can explore this network of you know, facts and truths. You can call it nafsul amra. But if you want to go further, you reach this, that there is such a reality and this reality comprises uh, beings, um, concepts, concepts which are ula, secondary, logical, philosophical. All of them are discoverable. If you talk in the way that would conflict with this network of truth, your sentence is false. Even if it is zehni. I cannot say it because it is zehni. So if whatever you know, I think in my mind uh, about mantik, for example, is correct. Mantik is zehni, but it's real. It's not, you know, whatever you have in your mind and because it's corresponding to your mind. Indeed, your mind is also just reflection of reality of those facts. They are facts, but of different type. They are not facts that you can touch, but they are facts. Okay, I think this might be enough for our discussion about Nafsul Amr. Inshallah, in the next session, we would have the 17th point about existence. You remember we said there are 17 points that we have to study. 
and this is about Ja'al. One of the important discussions of philosophy is about Ja'al. The cause initiates or makes the effect. But this making to what belongs? To what this making belongs? To Mahia, to Hodu, to what? We say to Vajud. The cause, which is Hasti Baksh, Mofive, the originating cause, gives existence, makes existence. Existence is Maj'ul, not Imkan, not Mahia, it's Vajud. Inshallah, we discuss this in the next session. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.